When NASA's New Horizons spacecraft eventually reached Pluto after nine years of traveling through the solar system and sent back the first images of the distant world, we saw something that completely blew our minds. Hello everyone, welcome back to Z. Subscribe to our channel and let us find what the New Horizons spacecraft could give us. Pluto had been a planet of contradictions for decades. Once believed to be the ninth planet in our solar system, it was reclassified, debated, and questioned. Even with our most powerful observatories, the object had remained a fuzzy dote. But now more than 80 years after its discovery, we have the first images of Pluto taken up close. The spacecraft revealed a Pluto with geological features indicating not only a history of activity but also the possibility of ongoing activity. Not a fossilized relic from the past, but a world in the process of transformation were suggested by the presence of towering mountains, deep valleys, and immense plains. The most surprising revelation, however, was the strong evidence of an ocean concealed beneath ice layers. This discovery did not merely cause us to reconsider Pluto, it also opened up new possibilities for the existence of life beyond Earth. If a dead planet at the outskirts of our solar system could sustain an ocean, what else might we discover as we explore the cosmos further? The discovery of a subsurface ocean on Pluto was puzzling and prompted a number of important inquiries. How could an object more than 4 billion miles from the sun with a surface temperature of minus 380 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 228 degrees Celsius contain an ocean? What is actually occurring within Pluto to produce an active geology on the distant world? Lastly and most importantly, why do some astronomers want the IAU to reconsider Pluto's planetary status in light of everything we have learned about the planet? The past contains the answers to the mysteries surrounding Pluto's subsurface ocean. According to one of the most widely acknowledged theories, Pluto was once thought to have had a very cool beginning. During the formation of the solar system, the protoplanetary disk of gas and dust provided the raw materials for planet formation, as is well known. Similar to most other planets, Pluto formed in the Kuiper Belt region beyond Neptune approximately 4.6 billion years ago during the early phases of solar system development. The Kuiper Belt consists primarily of frigid substances, including water ice, methane ice, and other volatile compounds. It is plausible that different ices collided and merged in this region over millions of years. Gradually, they clustered sufficiently to form a larger body of Pluto's dimensions. In addition, because the temperatures here are considerably lower than in the inner regions of the solar system, these ices have remained largely undisturbed. This eventually led to Pluto having a nice beginning. Over time, Pluto's internal heat would have dissolved a portion of its ice, resulting in the formation of a subsurface ocean. Now this theory adequately explains the subsurface ocean of Pluto. However, there is a catch. When a team of researchers decided to verify this hypothesis roughly two years ago, they realized that a cold start may not be the case for this dwarf planet. Instead, according to new geological observations of Pluto's surface, its formation began in a heated state. It underwent a violent formation involving a series of enormous impacts comparable to those experienced by the early Earth. How did the geological features observed by New Horizons cast light on Pluto's formation scenario? Well, this can be comprehended by observing a commonplace occurrence. Temperature determines a molecule's vibrational energy. Consequently, when temperatures decline and water freezes, water molecule vibrations decrease. Consequently, a less compact crystalline structure is produced. In accordance with this phenomenon, water expands as it freezes and contracts as it dissolves. Consider placing a glass of water in the freezer and allowing it to solidify if you wish to see a demonstration of this. You will observe that the glass may shatter due to the water's expansion. Nonetheless, please exercise caution and supervise this endeavor as it can be hazardous. Now that we've turned our attention to Pluto, it's clear that its surface should have expanded if it was initially warm and then progressively froze. 
Consequently, this expansion should manifest itself in Pluto's geological features. In contrast, if Pluto had a frigid start and then warmed up, its surface should exhibit compression features. When the research team examined the New Horizons spacecraft's observations of this distant world, they were astonished by what they discovered. To everyone's astonishment, there were no visible indications of compression, whereas expansion was readily apparent. This was evident in all of Pluto's impact craters, including those in the oldest terrains, which appeared to be splayed out. The existence of a subsurface ocean also indicates how rapidly Pluto formed. How the heat generated by these eruptions would have continued to accumulate within Pluto's interior if it had a violent beginning with successive large impacts. This in turn would have made it easier for Pluto's internal ocean to remain liquid. However, in order for an ocean to develop in this manner, Pluto must have formed swiftly, most likely in less than 30,000 years. Because each impact would have acted as a minor explosion, it would have heated Pluto's surface. If Pluto had formed more gradually, its surface would have chilled before the next impact. In contrast, the planet's surface would have become sufficiently heated to spawn a liquid ocean in a scenario of rapid formation involving multiple simultaneous impacts. Furthermore, this theory is consistent with a study that suggests Kuiper Belt objects could have formed within a few hundred or thousand years. Regardless of how Pluto formed, current research indicates that its ocean is likely heated by radioactive decay in its rocky interior, which is located beneath a dense icy shell. This research highlights the profound insights that can be gained from geological observations of celestial bodies. Moreover, if the hypothesis about Pluto's heated beginning proves accurate, it could have significant ramifications for other dwarf planets in the region, such as Eris, Megmek, and Haumea. Consequently, if Pluto formed rapidly and under intense heat, these dwarf planets may have endured similar processes, resulting in the presence of oceans comparable to Pluto's. Now the query is, should Pluto's planetary status be reconsidered? The International Astronomical Union IAU, demoted Pluto to dwarf planet status in 2006. The IAU's definition of a planet requires an object to be in orbit around the Sun, have sufficient mass for its self-gravity to surmount rigid body forces, and have cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. Pluto satisfies the first two criteria, but fails to satisfy the third. Some astronomers believe that Pluto should be reclassified as a planet since the New Horizons spacecraft returned the first images of the planet. They contend that the IAU's definition of a planet is overly subjective. The definition of a planet should be founded on an object's intrinsic properties rather than its dynamic relationship with other solar system objects. According to this definition, Pluto obviously qualifies as a planet. There are mountains, valleys, craters, and even an ocean beneath the surface. This indicates that Pluto is geologically active, as is typical of planets. In addition, Pluto has a tenuous atmosphere and a moon system. This indicates that Pluto has sufficient gravity to retain these objects, which is another characteristic of planets. What are your thoughts on the subject? Intriguingly, the discovery of subsurface oceans not only increases our knowledge of celestial bodies, but also raises the tantalizing possibility of habitable environments beyond Earth. Subsurface oceans provide a safe refuge for the survival of life, protecting it from the dangers of catastrophic impacts and radiation exposure. This study suggests that Earth may not be the only oceanic planet in our solar system, rather many oceans may exist beyond the scope of our current knowledge. However, future observations are required to validate these possibilities, and only then can a definitive conclusion be reached. Thanks for watching everyone. If you find this content valuable, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss any future update.